be picked after this tournament. In place at the moment, Oscar Dominguez and Scarlett Woodward. But if Woodward loses here, he might be vulnerable and might need a pick. Yeah, and also, you know, Josh Roberts trying to make some noise and, like I talked about before, make his argument for a thought for that team. He's had a great year here in the U.S. Skyler needs to shake off a match there on the qualification winner's side that wasn't his friend. I don't know if the template really did him any favors there. We talk about it, and the template's a good thing under our break rule, but sometimes it can get the best of you when the cue ball roams across it. Now, Skyler, of course, who's made a huge equipment change, I think way for the better, in my opinion, but that is totally my opinion. These two have played each other many times. What were they saying to each other there, Jeremy, do you think? Well, you know, sometimes it gets me, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> so no telling, really. Like I said, these two have been close. So Skyler, I don't think he's cut off the two ball. And you know as well as I do, even though you don't play the game, Phil, these opening racks, these opening shots are so huge to set the tone, not just for the match, but mainly for yourself. Squeezed at home, used every bit of that side pocket. He got the maximum out of that, didn't he? Yeah, and Skyler, you know, was really known for a while around America just as, you know, the best player on the seven footer. And you think that doesn't do a whole lot for you, but in certain such goofy kind of situations or odd shots, you know, that's what you deal with on the seven footer a lot for one reason or another. So, kind of helps him at, at times. Of course, sometimes he can get a little short with the technique a little bit, just kind of goes back to that seven-footer kind of swing. And, oh, I don't know about that. And that was a let up on the swing. You can tell he overcut the ball and still ended up a good six to eight inches short with the cue ball. So, Yeah, that deceleration causes the ball to be overcut. We see it repeatedly. Yeah, two things happen when you decel. You don't deflect it as much, so therefore the bend on the ball takes a little early. And Phil, even though he doesn't play, is really wise to it because that's dead correct, Phil. Josh Roberts talked about him earlier today. Really a guy that's used to grinding on the one-loss side in a lot of matches. So two early mistakes by these two players, and... Talked to Josh a little bit. Of course, he wasn't happy with his performance on the TV table here earlier in this event. Wanted to make a big difference in this match here, but that's not the starter he wanted. Of course, the five was deposited. Not the best shape on the six. It shouldn't cause a problem, but it could. Yeah, this is funny. Both ways, the cut in the side goes away from the seven to where you're going to have to shoot long distance. This isn't the type of six ball on the side you're going to shoot with a lot of speed. The cross side bank, definitely playable, but off angle, and he has to create a little bit with the cue ball. So if he happened to want to play safe here, uh, you know, this wouldn't be the worst time with what looks like a little bit of an open shot. Looks like he's going to play it in the side. He's going to try and come two rails off of this ball. This is a ball that wants to stand up a little bit. We'll see how he cues it. Now he's hitting a high ball. That means he's kind of rolling it. Maybe coming between the 8-9 with the cue ball. Oh, that's going to slow down a little bit. Well, that's a big shot. Skylar Woodward and his October pink. Breast cancer awareness, always in October. Well, that's a big shot also after that miss earlier. A couple big shots here to what looks like retire rack one on his side. You 
those two definitely coming from two different origins of today. Skylar with a pretty poor match. Josh getting going on the loser side. Indeed, but Skylar Woodward, who is complaining about a stomach upset earlier in the day, will be happy with the way he started. It was all about a Josh Roberts mistake in the end. Woodward leading 1-0. Yeah, when you think Skylar Woodward's abilities, the fact he's been a, a Moscow Cup MVP. And I was looking at the live nine ball rankings a short time ago, and he's 43rd there. Now, that's not representative of his abilities and how good he is. No, not at all. But, you know, maybe a little small slice of humble pie he's had this year, recognizing that. It's one thing to maintain, but maintaining isn't going to get it. You have to keep improving. And, you know, the great players, the discipline is you don't see the improvement as much. It's a long-term kind of thing. But squeaking out extra games that lead to extra matches that lead to, of course, more points and more dollars. Started off in this tournament with a 9-0 win over Nick Yale. Then he beat Jeffrey DeLuna. Hill Hill, 9-8, before losing 9-5 to Moritz Neuhausen, the youngster from Germany who is so highly touted. Yeah, you look around and just look at the scores on that loser qualification and so many, you know, some champions of this event and many other big events. Darren Appleton's struggling to try and get through. He's trails. Not sure who beat him on the winner side, but... Just a ton of names, and that's the break that he's looking for. That's the timing break that gets the spreads, gets the one down, not much congestion, and a great shot on the two. And I think it's Delgado that's got Appleton in trouble at the moment. And he's been awfully impressive this year. Delgado has a semifinalist. European Open. Didn't play his absolute best in the semifinal match, but sure played well to get there. Well, I've just seen Darren Appleton disconsolately walking past our commentary position, so I think he might well have been defeated there by Delgado. I will tell you in a second. I kind of feel like he's on his timeout. Maybe he finally got a chance. But off angle here on the three. Got to come across and take a thin one on the four. Should be okay, the thin one on the four, though. You just track the cue ball up towards the six. Now he's going to like that stroke much cleaner. You're right. He's not defeated yet, but he is in trouble. 7-4 down. Doesn't look happy. No, I think he finally just put a game on the board. He was down 7-3. to three. Preach to the guys, hey, you got to figure out a time to take your time out, whether it's a good position or a maybe not so good position, but it's there to be taken. Now, this is the type of shot I really think Schuyler's new equipment is going to really serve him a lot of dividends. Once you get used to it, high performance cue in his hands really uh, does the trick. And now to kind of put a little something on top of that mistake by Josh Roberts, a break and run here in the second. Now that is the real Scarlet Woodward. Can be so potent, can be so explosive. Jeremy was right. He has doubled his advantage. Woodward leads 2-0. Let's give you some scores in this loser's qualification. Mustafa Alna from Turkey on the hill against Masato Yoshioka, who we saw give Joshua Filler quite a game a little earlier today. Kyle Akalu from South Africa, 6-1 up on Hunter Lombardo. Liu Ri Teng and Ko Ping Chung. Hill Hill, 8-8. Marcel Price from Wales. He's broken run three times in his match against Met Vergara from the Philippines and he leads 7-4. I can tell you Ko Ping Chung has just beaten his fellow player from Chinese Taipei 9-8. Dennis Grabber is through at the expense of Joe Spence. 
John Mora has beaten Toli Han. Gregory Hogue, he's 7-3 up on Chris Alexander. Lee Van Corteza and Wu Kunlin. They bolster the Asian representation in the last 64 tomorrow. Yeah, I spoke with Skyler this morning. He really kind of came up to me, just tell me that how off his stomach was. And, you know, it's, to be honest with you, he and I joke, we both have kind of a cast iron stomach for the most part. And so that's kind of odd. He said he went and ate a big meal last night, hasn't felt very good since. I'll tell you what, in this match at least, it hasn't slowed down the break shot. Perfect. I do recall, though, he had a. A dicky stomach, as we say in the UK, at the World Masters. Yeah, well, I'll be honest with you. Sometimes when you're overseas, it can easily happen to you. You know, water's a little different. Whatever it may be, I've, I've you know, found myself where I wasn't at ease so much when I'm abroad. But right here in the USFA, I feel like he's pretty comfortable in that regard, but not so much today. Well, I must say, the highlight of my trip so far, apart from the pool, and it's been the case with every American trip I've ever taken, I just love the food over here, the Philly cheesesteaks and the, the Rubens. Oh, I can't get enough of them. Well, I'll tell you, I can, I can definitely uh, let America know how genuine of a guy you are, but I think they could tell it in the voice right there, Phil. It's like you had won the World Snooker Championship right there. Yeah, I think if I lived here, I would put on a serious amount of weight because it's not just that, the, the cheesecakes and, oh, dear me, key lime pies. Don't get me started. Yeah, every state kind of has their thing, and we tour the country to see all the different sites, but you know, the little extras at the restaurants and delis and whatnot pretty special in this country. And the thing is, we have all the international flavors at a real high high bar, like a high rate and real quality as well. I'm envious, and Josh Roberts will be envious of Skyler Woodward because Sky has taken a 3-0 lead. It all started with that mistake from Roberts when he missed a ball he shouldn't have, and ever since, Woodward has seemed really on top of things. Josh Roberts... He began with a 9-1 win over Dan Segui, then lost 9-1 to Jason Shaw. But he's bounced back with two hard-fought victories on the one-loss side. He beat Tommy Tucker Koji, 8-7, and then Mario Teutcher, 8-6. That's why he's here. He's originally from Boston, Massachusetts, but the family moved south when he was 14. He's based in Pinewood, South Carolina. Now age 41, father of five. Yeah, he's definitely a, a family man, and uh, even though he does get out and travel a lot with the pool, remember the first time I laid my eyes on Josh in Mobile, Alabama, like some others, never thought he'd be to the point he's at, but just a hard worker, and, you know, he's a lot like SVB as far as always hitting balls. Speaking of which, after this break shot, I'm going to see if you can connect a little trivia for SVB today. You see SVB over there practicing, Phil. Oh, no, here's a ball in hand, so Josh Roberts going to have a chance to get started. You're going to have to wait till he turns this way, but I want you to see the shirt he has on and tell me the reference. Well, I saw him practicing earlier on with a, a black shirt with white letter Shane across the front. Yeah. Do you know what that's from? Oh, well, obviously it's his name, but... Yeah. Well, he should follow this ball over. I don't know why he's drawing it. You would, should never draw the ball when you can follow, but still should be fine. A little preference, but remember the color of money? And Paul Newman said to Vincent with the black shirt, and it said Vincent on it, and he said, hey, don't lose the shirt. That's the reference. Right, right. Okay, does he go into the purple five here, if, it, if it's even possible? If he does go into it, watch out if the cue ball may end up towards the eight and nine like this. Oh no. 
That was risky, but I think it was about all you had. So a little bit of early position with ball in hand costing Josh what should have been not routine, but more doable than what we're seeing. Nice shot. From the, the one pocket man. He's very good at all forms of the game. But he's deadly at one pocket. Yeah. That includes all kinds of bank shots. Of course, we usually call that one kind of a nine ball player's bank. You know, they get the feel for it early. Every practice table has been taken since this arena has opened on Sunday. Non-stop, the guys that have qualified, getting all the practicing they can. This is a one loss, or loser's qualification, excuse me. So whoever advances here is going to face an undefeated player. Taking the extension off, taking a little weight off. So he must be hitting kind of a soft spin, maybe. Oh, okay, that's going to work. But now Josh has a very unique technique, uh, a little more old school, what we call slip stroke. So you'll watch the hand be choked up. When he takes his little pause at the cue ball, he slides the hand back and then makes the swing. Didn't get to see it there, but a little more of what you saw in yesteryear. It's certainly a very fluid stroke, isn't it? Oh yeah, very athletic, but watch the right hand. He just slips it back a little bit. And it's kind of his trigger. He was putting balls on the table there before the white had stopped. He's so keen to get on with things. Let me give you some more scores. Mustafa Alna now on the hill against Masato Yoshioka at 8-6. Kyle Akalu looking good against Hunter Lombardo. He's 6-1 up. Marcel Price from Wales on the hill at 8-4. Little further down, Chris Reinholdt, US Moscone Cup player, 8-7 up. One rack away from single elimination last 64. Jose Alberto Delgado now 7-5, so maybe the timeout from Darren Appleton is beginning to work. It's 6-6, six, six. Alexander Kazakis and Mickey Krause over on table two. And Bada Alawadi from Kuwait going really nicely against Karol Skaversky, the former World Masters champion. Alawadi leads 6-1. Roland Garcia from the Philippines leads Nicholas or Nikos Economopoulos. 6-2. Yeah, and batter, I don't think he gets enough credit. I mean, if you just sat there and watched him play, you'd be very impressed. Now a dry break there, and that's not going to get it done. Josh knows that. He hit the one maybe a little too full. Kind of made the one go through the rack. It hit a little low to the side. Maybe a hair more cut next time. And you mentioned the name Chris Reinhold. From what I've done, seen and talked to Chris, I think I expected him actually to have a good U.S. Open. Well, it's hard, only one guy can win it and one guy can finish second and so on, but I thought he was in a good place. I'll tell you what we might see from Sky here is a long rail bank. On the three, not the two ball, of course, but he can't really get that great a position on the combo. He really cheated the pocket there. Got a lot out of the cue ball. Still nothing easy. He's got to kind of slow roll this. Because the cue ball's not going to come up. It's going to glance the four. Always think that one of Skyler Woodward's greatest assets, he's got real vision great shot maker doesn't matter what kind of match he's in he always has that sixth sense well I agree totally and doesn't get a lot of uh, that's got to go a little bit he wanted the two rail angle with top inside uh, he doesn't get enough credit tactically I think I think he's similar to Josh in that regard 
but like I was saying earlier, when you play a lot of years on seven footers, they're not always so pristine. <laughs> so you have to learn these tricky shots and these little instincts about what's going to happen and collisions and when you're breaking balls out. And this could be problems here. Kind of punched it, didn't get enough draw, and now Josh Roberts going to enter with another ball in hand. Yes. Woodward scratched on the break in rack four, and now scratches much later in rack five. From here, it should be plain sailing. Tip come up there, very fortunate. Definitely didn't want to come in tight like that. When you come in tight, not only that side pocket, but you don't have position till the very last second. 3-2 then. Woodward's lead is reduced. Right at the start, we were talking about this match in terms of not just getting through to the last 64 of the US Open, which is a major deal in itself, but also because it has Moscone Cup implications. The Moscone Cup out on its own in terms of the profile of the event. It is Europe versus the USA. Jeremy Jones will again captain the USA this year. And the event will take place at Bally's Las Vegas on the famed strip November the 30th to December the 3rd. It's one of those tournaments that, yes, this is an individual sport. But when you've got that team environment and you've got that genuine rivalry, plus a huge crowd, which is guaranteed, it's like nothing else. Yeah, I mean, like, of course, the World Cup starting here in Qatar next month. I mean, that's a huge event. And, you know, you look at the stands, the way the emotions and the energy, you know, really gets going in those events. I think the Moscone, even more unique to itself, just once a year and, Europe against the U.S., but the energy in the building, you just, just kind of like the table, you can't duplicate it. Named after the great Willie Moscone. I wonder what he would have thought of it, the great man. Well, I think, of course, not knowing him, I did meet him once in 1991 at the Hall of Fame tournament in Dallas. Very lucky to do so, but I think uh, he'd be proud of that event. So I know someone who's met Willie Moscone. That's made my day. Yeah, they had a Hall of Fame tournament in Dallas. Uh, quite a few of them were there. The older school ones, plus some of the younger Hall of Famers. Well, considering younger compared to Irving Crane and Jimmy Karras and Willie Moscone, of course, Jim Rempe, Mike Siegel, Nick Varner, all kinds of Hall of Famers, all kinds of green jackets. Now that pesky template is in the way again. John Lehman, the referee, being made to work in intricate ways. Can't ask for more much, much more than this. A dry break in his first. Put a little more cut into it there. Got the one in the side. Really no worries at all. I mean, looking at a two ball that easily gets to the three, the four is there, the five's over the corner, six over the opposite corner. So really the most work would be from the six to the seven, even though that's fairly routine for these guys. Main thing here, stay focused. Are you saying this is a road map, Jeremy? Are you saying it? Go on. I thought you had retired that one, Phil. Or are is you, it just for special moments? I used it yesterday, but with Carl Boys, and it didn't really have the same resonance with him as it does with you. Okay. Well, putting out a feeler then, I guess is what you're getting at. Josh Roberts tucking the shirt in there. Of course, we're playing all ball fouls. And the key to that is once you get in position, don't ever go any lower. Now here, he should stun and kind of lay on the top rail. That will easily get him towards the seven.
Josh has kind of had it all today. You know, won a match relatively easily. Not too easily, but then had a huge lead in a match that he kind of gave that lead up. He was up 5-0 to zero in his last before finally winning 8-6. to six. We got the feeling before the start of this match it could be close and right now it couldn't be closer it is 3-3 so all of the losers qualification matches have either finished or are in progress apart from one over on table two Christina to catch and Albin Auschen are waiting for the end of Mickey Kraus against Alexander Kazakis Kazakis leading 7-6 there. Tim De Reuter from Holland, 7-2 upon Reina La from Estonia. Roland Garcia on the hill against Nikos Economopoulos at 8-2. Dang Than Kien, 4-2 up on a fine talent from Bosnia, Sandjan Perlovanovic. Jose Alberto Delgado now on the hill against Darren Appleton at 8-5. Poland has such a wealth of talent. Daniel Masayol, he's 7-6 up on Katsuji Teruya from Japan. And, well, a veteran Polish player, one of the very first to break through onto the international stage and do well, Radislav Babica, he's beaten Jan van Lierup, the Dutchman, 9-2. Oh, really awful hit on the one there. Like to have that one back. Barely catching in the one in the second dry break. Really fortunate not to lose the cue ball. You can see him talking to himself there. Not happy with that break shot. And Chris Reinhold, I believe, is at Hill Hill now. 8-8 eight eight for his tournament life. Yes, and he's another one in that Moscone Cup mix. Yeah, difficult here. You'd like to hit the right side of the one in a confident manner. And go into the three to hold the cue ball, but you've got to be confident. Any miss hit there definitely could sell out or lose the cue ball, but I think you have to shoot this. It needs a little right spin to get into the three. Yeah, he didn't put a ton of right spin, but it's going to be just fine. And that's the gamble in nine ball pool. You got to take some chances. Well, our stats department who are working overtime just told me that was the 17th dry break on table one today. And this is only match five. Smart kick, I think, here, even though. Did he catch that on the way in? I'd like to see a replay on that just because it's easy to miss it. If it and you wouldn't believe how lightly you can shave a ball. I just thought I thought I saw something move. Oof, I'll tell you, I'm still not convinced it didn't just wiggle a hair. A lot sometimes the shadow going by the ball will really fool you, but It's a lot closer than I think uh, it appeared. And still not settled. I mean, not saying this is bad, but how much easier is things if he gets where he wants on the two ball? Still okay, though. What happens when Skyler, when the you know heat gets going, he gets a little shorter and quicker with the backswing. Now his talent, and he's used to doing that when the heat gets going a little bit. But I think it can get the best of you. Got him a couple times already. That was a better stroke. He's going to get a little more out of it than he wanted, but that's okay. He can cut the five after pocketing the four.
course, if you're an American fan, the future of this sport is so important, and our junior event starts tomorrow at 10 a.m. Should be a lot of fun and a lot of great play as well. Yes, and already in the main event, the U.S. Open itself, quite a few juniors have showed their skills, the likes of Joey Tate, Riku Rompainen, Payne McBride had a victory. Woodward back in front. Indirectly, it was all about that dry break again. Roberts needs to break off more effectively if he is going to pose a threat. To win, breaking badly, things have got to go very much your way, especially against an opponent of Skylar Woodward's capabilities. When you look at his career record, it is very impressive indeed. He's been on two winning Moscone Cup teams in 2018 and 2019. And on both occasions, he was the MVP, the most valuable player. He's won the nine ball division at the Derby City Classic. He won the US Open eight ball in 2019. Various other events as well all around the country. So Roberts knows exactly what he's up against. And another American squeak through there, nine to eight for Chris Reinhold. Yeah, and what you said at the beginning of that statement probably has as big a deal or as big a deal as any other part of this change is before, I think what upset some of the players with the old break rule, of course we didn't get to see enough pool. That, that I think is obvious to everyone. Watch out, another cue ball lost. Wow, now that one wasn't his fault. But um, what you said to begin that statement where when you hit the rack poorly, you know, before when you could hit the rack poorly and still make balls and still get shots, and that's just not really how it's supposed to be. And yet the pool gods are saying to Scarlett Woodward, we're going to temporarily desert you at least. That's two scratches on the break from him. angle there so don't be afraid to move the cue ball over for the three in the same pocket if needed I think he can hold it but both are clear now just two rails between the six seven the cue ball should kind of cross the path it's in now I don't want to bump a ball here and make the seven tough. Oh, he's maybe overcut this. Okay, it did squeeze in, though. And what Josh has probably realized, again, compared to the outer tables, the ball's cut just a little easier out here. But they'd also fall a hair easier, so. The table giveth and the table taketh away. Should tie things up though. Woodward, every right to be frustrated when that cue ball disappeared. You know, what happens in a match like this sometimes is if you're in Skylar's shoes, you know, you maybe don't get as worried because you haven't seen that break from, from Josh be very consistent. The problem with that is all these players can turn that around immediately. Doesn't take much. Funny coming across the nine with that much speed. Usually you wouldn't want to get to that second rail from there. The side pocket really comes into play. As soon as the wide ball went down, I think Woodward feared the worst. And those fears were well founded in the end. It is 4-4. Eight racks each. Mustafa Alda and Masato Yoshioka over on table 26 out in the sticks. Kyle Akalu 6 3 up on Hunter Lombardo. Tafun Tabor 7 3 up on Daniel Gutenberger. 
764 Ralph Suke, the ultimate battler against Emil Andre Gangflot from Norway. Tyler Steyer recovering from that defeat by Shane Van Boning. He's 7 4 up on Sharik Saeed from Singapore. Neil Svayan 3 1 up on Yipkin Ling Liu. And Greg Hogue has advanced into that final 64, and he has some points to be spoken of. Had a win at Sandcastle in a smaller ranking event this year, but still had to play pretty darn well to win. Yeah, he qualified for the single elimination with a 9-4 win over Chris Alexander of GB. Yeah, a player that's playing all the events and definitely improving. Took a hair of speed off, got the cut he wanted. A lot of congestion on that lower right side. What happens when you cut it a little more and a hair speed off, they kiss each other down by this pocket. And These two enjoying it. Looks like it's going to be just a simple safety on the back side of the seven with the cue ball. With all that congestion, that's when you do keep the safety simple. All right, he can go up by the eight, top rail, side rail, kick towards congestion. Got a chance to pocket the four a few ways here, too, with the cue ball or the two. So you don't want to kick super light. Give a chance of luck. And he's going to leave him. Well, elevated, stretched. Going to have to play a delicate little kiss shot here, I think. And the thing is, you need to control the two coming out with the cue ball. Oh, nice shot, Josh. It was important he kind of got through that to where the cue ball could travel up. Otherwise, he couldn't get position on the three. And Robert's looking for his first lead. Josh can be a rhythm player at times and not saying it totally cost him, but sometimes I think it makes things a little more difficult than they should be. Like there, if he goes and looks, he knows he wants to roll a little higher with the cue ball so you can reach it. And he likes to shoot the bridge like this, more of a, a standard kind of stroke. With the application of bundles of check side as well. Yeah, it's a little different than years ago. The rules didn't really allow you to get the bridge in that kind of setup, but now where extensions are legal, length of the queue is not really a... Ooh, squeeze that one home, I'll tell you. A little wide to the pocket, and now he's got a little bit of a tester. He was watching on there a little anxiously, but for no reason in the end. That's perfectly fine. Skyler Woodward led 3-0 and 4-3. But he now trails because for the first time in the match, Josh Roberts hits the front at 5-4. I think this is a conversation that you can't get involved in, Jeremy, for obvious reasons. But I think everyone in the world of pool knows that Skylar Woodward, if he doesn't make the team automatically, surely he will be picked for the Moscone Cup last day in November, first three days of December, given his record in that illustrious event. Plus, of course, his status within the game generally. But, of course, if he has to be picked... He might make the argument that that wastes one of Jeremy Jones's picks. 
Of course, if he were to win this match and have a, a deep run here, it would be a moot point. He would qualify automatically anyway. But if he were to lose this match to Josh Roberts, then who knows? Skylar Woodward might need the captain's pick. Yeah, well, to be fair and optimistic, you know, we always want Americans to win, but I kind of feel like he's going to need a captain's pick if he loses here. I think one of those Americans that's right behind him that qualified is going to do well. So that's just staying positive and what I think is going to happen. But Shane Wolfer's not far behind him. Shane's through to the final 64, had a nice win to get there. Um, there's a few others not far behind as well. So if that makes any sense, what I just said, but. Yeah, you'll be doing some head scratching, won't you? So we know that the qualification period for the Moscone Cup is over at the end of this tournament. So when do you have to make your two selections, Mike? Well, I'll have to firm it up with the matchroom, of course, uh, as far as when. Um, but I believe it's going to be all done by the end of next week. So, you know, for the Europeans and for the Americans, I think... Yeah, that one's going to go long, and he's going to need a roll. He got the cue, cue ball where he wanted, so we'll see what Sky deals with from there. But I think come Saturday evening-ish, I think the math will tell us kind of who the two other players off rankings are for both teams. Won't be hard. Pool players, I tell you. We don't know everything when it comes to the books, but the numbers, we can figure out the numbers pretty quick. So, and then the, the two picks will follow that week. And do you ring up the guys when they've got in the team and congratulate them? Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah I don't know what he's going to do here. I may try to use distance as my friend here as well. He's going to play a real first shot. Is he going to try and kill it and bank the two on the other side of the nine? Like a one pocket shot? Oh, he put, he needed right spin on that, not left spin. Or, no, excuse me, he needed left spin on that, not right spin. I think he was trying to creep the cue ball up on them balls there, that being the four, five, and nine. He's really in a bad spot. Maybe he just caught the two a little thin, is all. And he used every bit of the pocket there, so surprised the cue ball didn't run a little further and get a little too straight. I, have to, I might take on the four from some distance because your line on the four is much more important where the five is than getting close to it. I mean, it would be nice to get close to it. I'd probably just lay up over here on the in between the six, seven and take on the longer shot. Oh, this has got to slow down, I think. Wow, good control, but that's kind of my point. Even though he got close, the line on the ball isn't that great. So much better to be straighter on the pink and further away. Otherwise, you got to play a pretty touchy position shot. Now, I may kill the ball here, float this in and play from underneath the purple five. I don't see the point in coming up. Yeah, I like this play here. You can make a sound decision from there. Taking it on in the corner. Yeah. And who was it earlier that we did? I think it was Masato. He had a few of them that kind of teeter-tottered in. You know, you keep doing that, you're a little off. One or two of them is going to stand up. And that five ball caught the cushion far, far too early to give him any realistic hope of the pot being achieved. Long rail bank coming. Shouldn't have a ton of speed, but definitely not slow rolled. I uh, tried to hit it in a little bit more. Gonna give up a return shot, I think, anyways. Yeah, it's kind of like, you know, the driver, taking the driver out, hitting it in the rough. Oh, you, you caught you a good lie a few times, but it's gonna bury eventually. <laughs> Yeah, 
Woodward trying to make something happen. Look at that, Woodward not effective from distance. Not yet, anyway. Oh, nice kill stroke there. A little brush on the seven may have helped. Go a bit. I don't think he got there. The nine's a big ball, and he doesn't have enough angle to work the ball around the table. He's going to have to load this up with inside. He may even cross bank this ball. I doubt that, but. This is very awkward. shot at a big moment. He may be banking this the way he's cueing it. Oh, he banked it long, just long. Now that's two misses this game. He may have gotten very fortunate with one on the purple five and now the seven. But I'll tell you what, if Skyler doesn't like the side pocket cut shot or the corner, he will definitely cross corner this bank. It's a specific piece of luck, you know, that is gold dust at this level. If you can get away with mistakes, it's such a benefit. Yeah, and the thing about it is most of the great players really capitalize on that luck as well. That's where it really gets compounded. Like I said, oh, it looks like he's sizing up the cross side bank, which on the slick table, hard one to judge. And watch out for the two rail scratch where he's standing in the lower right corner. Oh, he hit that sweet. Could that inventive bank be the catalyst for better things for Skylar Woodward? It's all square again, as it was at 3-3 and 4-4. Now it is at 5-5. Some scores for you. Alexander Kazakis has just beaten Nicky Kraus, 9-7. Bada Alawadi, a while ago, completed a 9-2 win over Karol Skaversky. Roland Garcia from the Philippines, 9-3 over Nikos Economopoulos. Just before this match began, actually, the big breaking Dutchman, Mark Beisterbosch, he came through 9-5 against Ronald Regley in loser's qualification. So we're gonna see him tomorrow. Darren Appleton, back-to-back -back champion of the US Open in 2010 and 2011, is out, beaten 9-5 by Jose Alberto Delgado. Neil Sfayan, still in the early stages of his match against Yipkin Ling Leo. 3-2 fine leads and Tyler Steyer on the hill on table 10 against Sharik Saeed at 8-4 Emil Gangflot and Ralph Suke 7-7 Tafe and Tabor 7-4 up on Daniel Guttenberger that's Germany against Austria on table 4 Mustafa Alma has come through a hill-hill battle with Masato Yoshioka at 9-8, so Turkey will be represented in the last 64. And South Africa's Kyle Akalu is on the hill against Hunter Lombardo, 8-3 there. I'll tell you what, that last 64 lineup is gonna be full of, full of talent and experience, full of ambition. It's gonna be terrific from tomorrow morning onwards. Yeah, absolutely, and I was Thinking about Darren Appleton, of course, one set of nine ball without putting my eyes on it. Hard to really make too many comments, but I, I just think about those players like Darren and Niels, Mika, some of the older guys really trying to, you know, get that spirit and that, that big win again like they've had before. Look at there, the Moscone Cup, December, November 30th through December 3rd. That's going to be the place to be, Phil. Yes, Bally's Las Vegas, and with regard to the Moscone Cup, we've just had 
a potentially significant result. Tyler Steyer has beaten Sharik Saeed from Singapore 9-4. Now that's a lot of fortitude, I think, from Tyler Steyer coming back from that defeat by Shane Van Boning and playing nicely to get through to the single elimination phase tomorrow. Yeah, Tyler, you know, he hasn't had the results that, uh, you know, some would think or some would think he should have had or even himself, but he's played a lot of great matches. You know, a lot of matches this year in big moments against, you know, the upper, upper echelon. He's had him beat, just couldn't quite close the door for one reason or another. It's not always fault in that regard. But. We've had so much pool news this week. The news from the European Open is that it's a three-year deal now at the Hotel Esperanto in Fulda, Germany, around an hour's train ride from Frankfurt, a new three-year deal. And the 2023 edition will take place from the 8th to the 13th in that lovely town. It really is a beautiful place. What we can tell you is, if you want to play, you're going on the reserve list. It's already fully taken. 256 players have entered. But in terms of buying tickets, they went on sale this week. Sales have been brisk, I can tell you, but there are some available. So get in now while you've still got the chance, because in the hotbed, the pool hotbed of Germany, and right in the heart of the country as well, that is a perfectly situated event. And the vibes from the inaugural event, Jeremy, you were there with me. I thought it was terrific. No, it was awesome. The fans were incredible. Fans are great in this sport all over, but a very warm welcome to the entire world there from all the players and fans in Germany and the city of Fulda. Great venue always, like Matchroom always puts together. But, yeah, you could really feel the energy that the fans brought there this past August, and I'm sure that will continue to grow. Yeah, a little quick there. A dry break from Skyler. He's had two scr uh, scratch on the break and now a dry one. Let's see what Josh Roberts wants to play with here on the one. John Lehman's going to have to pay attention to this one. Successful breaks, pretty low numbers, aren't they? Yeah, I guess there was no question on that hit at all. Now he's got a tester here, and this is one to where you got to be really accurate on the slick table. Have to put some heat on a small angle coming across with the cue ball. Easy to bobble this one. It's pretty clean, but you could tell it didn't really get much out of the cue ball. So does he lay him down behind the four, or does he take a cut at this? I like the cut shot, but seems Josh is going to play the safety. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Not at all. Did it leak here? This is close. Sixty-four players from the original entry of 256 will make single elimination. Starting here tomorrow, 57 of them are already through. Seven more places are up for grabs, including the winner here. Surprised he's going for this jump, just because the kick lays pretty nice to get some separation, just kicking to the side rail. Got a chance to pocket the three in the side maybe, but any way you come across the three, like I said, it's easy to get separation, so. That shows you about what these guys are all about. They want to put it in their hands. Even though he could sell out a pretty easy shot here, trying to bury this jump. Did draw the cue ball. I don't think this is going to be very friendly. And look at there. Talk about a little fortune. Now, he's not going to probably like it too much here in a moment, but. Now, can Josh just simply come off the right side of the three, go to the rail, and bury him behind the four? This could leave a very difficult kick shot. I 
may have to kick up underneath this. Kind of kick towards the place he's standing, come underneath the three and take his chances that way. But don't, don't be fooled thinking you can soft kick at this. You may not get a rail and may spread on you a little bit. I'd like to go ahead and go at this a little bit. If he's going to wrap the corner, he's almost got to elevate to get it to bite. And that's what he's doing. He's trying to swerve into this corner, create a little bit more angle to get at this three. Still difficult. Wow, good hit, good effort. And I don't think much of a reward, but a great effort there from Sky. Wasn't it just... So it's right in front of Josh to take this lead. Get the lead back here late in the match. And he's falling a little thin here. So he may follow this three rails to the center of the table just to get a little better on the five. Well, this is the problem. I'm not sure why he played it this way. Now he's going to have to go long to get on the six. Good thing for Josh Roberts, the seven is handy. Because if the seven was away from the pocket a little bit somewhere, this was a big mistake getting on the five the way he did. Because he's going to fall somewhat straight on the six. It's not going to hurt him so much, like I said, because the seven is very playable. But those types of mistakes with the cue ball, you know, on other layouts can really get you. Playing the cut, wants to go above the nine, you would think. So be careful of the side pocket. Nothing wrong with coming below the nine, two rails and taking a little more distance also. Oh, he decided to slow roll it and make it over the nine. He's okay. Skyler Woodward found himself in a really precarious position. He tried his best to extricate himself, but it wasn't good enough. Josh Roberts stole in, stole the rack, and he's back in front. Latest result, Kyle Akalu from South Africa is through at the expense of Hunter Lombardo. Akalu winning that match 9-3. So just six more matches in the losers' qualification round to be resolved. Tafe and Tabor, 7-5 up on Daniel Guttenberger. Emil Andre Gangflot, 8-7 up on Ralph Suke. It's 4-3 now for Niels Fine over Yipkin Ling Leo. Dang Than Kien and Sanjin Perlovanovic are five racks each. And just starting out on table two, it's Christina De Catch against Albin Auschen. Now, presumably, this match is going to be over before to catch an Aushin. If that is the case, which seems overwhelmingly likely, we'll take a short break and then we'll come back for bonus coverage of the, the Aushin to catch contest. Yeah, with that really you know, drama field and close match that Sanjin Pelovanovic had with Oscar, I kind of felt like he may have a lull, and that's what happened to begin his next match. He was down, I think, 5-2, 4-1, something like that, but now has kind of woken up during the middle of that match. And what a talent from 
Bosnia, Herzegovina. Sanjin, runner-up. Should have really won that gold medal at the World Games this year. Really, I kind of, kind of think, kind of outplayed Josh in the final. And we've had a variety of break shots from Josh Roberts. We're seeing lots of good stuff from both players, Jeremy, but <laughs> the break-off isn't in that bundle of brilliance. Far from it. Yeah, Skyler's had a couple of them that he really liked, and then he also lost the cue ball twice. Once, I think, was a little more on him. The other one, a bit of an unfortunate kiss, and he needs an angle here. Yeah, this could be touchy. A lot of traffic trying to go forward. He may have to draw back into that little window. The kind of where the cue ball's at now to try and cut the four in. I don't think he can get over for more of a straight shot on the four. Yeah, he may have to. <laughs> I don't think he can go forward with the cue ball at all. I call this kind of shot, use your talent, use your skill, your touch. To, like I said, get back into that gap to be able to cut the four in. Still no bargain because it's not going to lean towards good position on the five, and you have to have pretty good position on the five to hold for the six. So first things first, come clean on the four. Yeah, that's going to be too much, I think, anyways. It's close. Now this is the type of shot you don't mind flat cutting in, going back and forth. But this type of shot would spin on the slick table, pretty ill-advised. So he's going to play a safety. It's going to be a soft safety. It's going to leave a very easy kick shot. Yeah, didn't want to leave, leave a piece of the pink four, and not saying he'll shoot at it, but you just don't want to leave options. And the good thing for Josh is he's kicking this with a good element of safety behind the eight, and he's going to probably put the four in a very bad position down here below the five and six. Now, the one thing for Josh, he doesn't want this four to go in, most likely. Yeah. That goes back to some of that one pocket. Now really handling the cue ball. Started off the year, and it's been a very good year for him. Started off 2022 in early January by winning the one pocket at the Iron City Open in Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah, really nice big pool room there, just in a suburb. Right, he's got to hope this goes how he wants it. Can't be upset with that one. I should say Birmingham. I'm from the original Birmingham. <laughs> and that's how we pronounce it back home. Well, I think uh, that's how it originated here as well. But the southern draw, we kind of lengthen out some of those syllables. Now, Josh, watch out for the high ball. The high ball on the slick table, you could easily scratch off the bottom. And he didn't have that in mind. And if you're a fan, it looks like, what kind of shot was that? You know, when things don't work out, it can look awfully silly at times. But he was trying to come across that and bleed the cue ball up the table. Skyler Woodward with a great shot on the five, but a lot of work left. Look at the eight and nine, not the type of combo you want to have to play. So maybe we're looking at a short side position, or at least he wants to get very tidy position on the combo. So kind of how you feel coming two rails or one rail, just a little preference. I think most would go two rails here. And the main thing is you can be a little more aggressive. Uh, you 
you know, the second rail kind of eats the cue ball up a little bit to where you don't have to baby it as much. Well, this is pretty off angle. You know, if he can hit it at the lighter speed, and that wouldn't be like rolling it or anything, but he's going to draw the cue ball a little bit or stun. The thing is here, don't over hit it and make the pocket become a lot smaller. The relevant numbers here, 8-9 combo equals 6-6. Six, six. They're tied again as they were at 3-3, three, 4-4 three, four, four, and 5-5. Five, five. This is thrust and counter thrust just as we anticipated. Yeah, both these guys fighting for their tournament life and in my opinion, the tournament, of course, a little home cooking there being the US Open. Just always, for a long time, always had the toughest field, toughest conditions. Now a little different, the World Nine Ball Championships, the World Pool Championships, back in the hands of Matchroom. So I think the field would be back up to par in that event as well. Now, the mystery of the break. Can Woodward solve it? Yeah, the last one he just got a little quick, so he missed the one on the side. He's better, but still the same. He's just getting a little quick with the transition of the cue and pushing that one through those balls. That's why it's hitting low. Lucky for Skyler, didn't really give up much of a shot. Now, he can feather the one. Try and go to the rail and just creep up behind the three. The good thing is the four will block the one to where it doesn't have a playable pocket. Don't like hitting off the bottom side of it. Too much going on there, and you have to get into the ball to move the cue ball unless you're just slowly coming behind the five. Yeah, that's what... That's why I didn't like that shot so much, is you're trying to determine a lot of things going on instead of just nipping the right side of the one. Even if you don't get the snooker, you're leaving them seven, eight feet away and the one's protected. All right, so the two doesn't pass the seven, or it may actually, but he's a little thin here. Nothing wrong with coming at the nine with the cue ball here. If the two passes the seven, nothing wrong with coming kind of at the two as well. And he needs that to go. So he's going to have to take a cut shot. He'll just draw this out a little bit. No reason to panic. I think anyways, just draw it out and take a little cut to come between the eight and nine back up for the four. Yeah, just right in there. And this is what I think is a good sign for Skyler. I want him to have these type of racks where he's got to work it a little bit, look at the balls a little, piece them together. As we know, he's got the rhythm side of things. That's, that's not an issue. They may not ch catch the second rail here. The eight's a big ball, so we'll see. Yeah, I like that decision as well. And when he gets in that working mode field, double tough. I'll tell you who is double tough, and he has been for years. 53-year-old Ralph Suke, who is through to single elimination. He's beaten the Norwegian Emil Andre Gangflot. 9-8. This is going to be maybe our fourth lead change in this race to nine. Yeah, fluctuating fortunes. Remember Woodward 
Made a, a bright and breezy start. He led 3-0. But then Roberts began the fight back. Now, though, Woodward is in front once more at 7-6. Two more needed to be in the last 64 tomorrow morning. And I'll tell you what, no one will want to draw him. Yeah, absolutely. The number of matches now in progress dwindling fast. All losers qualification matches, of course, now. Neil Sviyan starting to get on top against Yipkin Ling Leo. It is 6-3 to Fyan. Over on table 11, Sanyan Perlovanovic on the hill now against Dang Than Kien from Vietnam at 8-5. And on table two, a match we will pick up shortly. Albin Aushin leads Christina to catch 2-0. Now oh, keeping up with all the American players and of course some of the others I love to watch. I didn't notice who Albin actually lost to. Wouldn't be no surprise who it is just because there's so many greats. But, yeah, got a little quick again. One hit low. I don't think he's going to get much cover. Well, maybe. Well, in answer to your question, Albin Aushin lost to Shi Chia Chen. 9-5. I watched four or five racks in that match and the Chinese Taipei player looked very assured. He wouldn't mind making this in the side, going for the safety eye, ah, caught it a little thin. So he's going to give up a look at the one, but nothing easy and maybe not even playable for Sky Woodward. Not an easy safety either. Anytime the ball's out in the middle, coming off one side or the other is very difficult because you're always dealing with traffic. Getting down on the ball quickly, so it's got to be a safety. I'm not sure where. He's going to try and bank the one between the four nine. Is that what he's looking at? Is he looking at a nine ball here and drawing the ball? Can't be looking at the nine. Looks like he's trying to float behind the five. Watch out for the scratch cross corner. All right, now the one's going to catch the pink four and that's always an awkward hit and again one of those shots Phil you don't practice right so I saw a glimpse there in the audience watching on Shane Van Boning yeah and Shane Wolford right there and Sky Woodward's back pocket big Big shot here for Josh. Wow, he didn't even go for it. So that tells me it was very off angle. Doesn't want to leave the kiss on the three. Does have him elevated a bit. Now here he can bank the one back down and use the three to hold the cue ball. Maybe the three bounces two rails out and gets a snooker on top of the cue ball. So this one here, not too difficult, even though you're elevated. You want to bank the, the one straight back down. Like I said, go into the three with the cue ball. Maybe the three knuckles out of the pocket and gets a little above the cue ball for a safety. You could follow through the three and scratch. That would be unfortunate. I don't really see another play, in my opinion anyways. The kiss shot's too thin. Oh, he's kicked behind it. So he wants that one to slow down. Didn't really see that option available. I thought the nine had the kick shot cut off. Boy, you can see a, a lot of the practice tables, especially on one side, taken up by the junior players getting ready for tomorrow. And see quite a few pros over there taking an interest at the future of this game. Yeah, the kids wide-eyed watching their heroes. Now we may get to see something special here. And he's going to survey where's the safety instead of this shot, and there is one. 
and lays pretty perfect actually to cut the one and bank it between the one, three and nine and just drop the cue ball two rails behind the purple five. Otherwise, he's going to elevate the cue and try and snatch the rock back for the, for the two up table. I like the safety though, to be honest with you, only because it lays really nice, very natural. Shouldn't be a kiss here. Cue ball is in a five's in a perfect position to give you lots of options for the safety. Oh, he went the other direction. This is a seller. Yeah, I didn't understand that one. Maybe he didn't see the other safety. Josh has no picnic getting position on the two. Going to come three rails tight here. Yeah, that was always going to be difficult. And just not understanding the table as much that that wasn't as possible with the three there as Josh may have figured it was. Got a little bit of the two. Not sure what he can do with it. If he can get a lot of it, pretty easy to go behind the four. He would be a big favorite. If he's thin on it, he may go around the four and bring the cue ball down by the three. If he's thin on it and feeling nice, he can just edge it and come between the six four up behind the six. Oh, this is a smart shot here. Really smart shot. And he really got the most of it, I think. He was blocking our view, but then he moved away, and we realized Skyler Woodward is in a heap of trouble here. Yeah, two rail kick to the bottom rail, side rail, right by the side pocket. Actually, the table plays nice to get at this two rail kick. May end up three rails behind it. Kind of a center ball, though. You cannot hit top English and get there. I, I shouldn't say you can't, but it's highly unlikely. It's more of a, like I said, a center ball hit. And what happens is the cue ball kind of turns over and becomes a roll off the second rail and will lengthen into that hit on the two. But you want center ball so it holds the line on the first rail. Hit top English here, figure it to bend. You should miss wide. Now you see him cueing downward, that's correct. Should hit this. And a beautiful hit. Beautiful hit. Stone dead with the cue ball. Given its timing, given its context, I would vote that shot of the match so far. Yeah, perfect speed. Gave it a chance to go just in case he hit the two. Now Josh has got to come with one. You know, didn't quite get it there. I don't know if he's given up the side. Definitely has given up the corner. And for Sky Woodward's confidence moving on in this event, burying this shot right here I think would go a long ways. I know that sounds crazy, one shot, but he's kind of the guy that no matter how the match goes, when things are right for Sky Woodward, he buries the big ones to end matches, even though there's been a few struggles. but not on that occasion. Yeah, I thought he liked it when he kind of released the cue, just knowing him as his body language and whatnot. And he's got a snooker here, but he knows he's a he's an underdog from this situation. Whether it be the jump cue, which Josh pretty good with the jump cue. I wouldn't doubt that, but the kick shot's pretty easy as well. He's going to swerve this ball. Wow. The two must be hanging a little more than I think. Yeah, almost any contact on the two gets you there. But it is away from it a hair, so you do have to cut the right side. So Josh didn't want to take a chance at catching this too full. So watch out for two things here. I don't, I'm not too concerned about the cue ball off the table. He's so good with the jump cue. But watch out going towards that side pocket, the right side. Uh -huh. And 
up right behind the three. That's pretty cold. That's a hard breaker, isn't it? And I think over the course of the next few racks, we're going to see plenty more. It's been that kind of match. Just struggles, emotional struggles. The stock of one player rising, then dramatically falling. Yeah, and he took the jump cue out of his hands quickly. I know the nine's a long ways away. He's pretty head on here. A lot of players would still jump at this, but if you're not comfortable with that type of jump, you got to go with what you think is correct. Oh, nice hit here. And giving himself a chance. You know, the four's a hair covered up. So if the four was open, I think we'd see Skyler just level out and take a chance at chopping this ball in. Otherwise, now, I don't know. He's going to try and hit the right side of this. His right. Uh, this is going to end up pretty nice, I think. Uh, well, at least he tied up the four, and he knew he had a little cover with the purple five. They're over Woodward's shoulder, the two Shanes, Walford and Van Boning. Their day's work is well and truly done. Now they can watch someone else sweat it out. Yeah, now the four's gotten open just a hair, and it was open enough for both these guys the way they banked the balls. So first one to get a shot will go offensive most likely, trying to get out. He's going to do the same thing, edging his right side of the three, trying to come two rails, and then the third rail at the pink four. I oh, ain't got him behind him this time. He's going to like this. One of the lengthiest racks we've seen in this year's tournament, and also one of the most intriguing. Okay, he's going to give up. Well, the three traveled quite a bit, so I don't think we're going to see Skyler attack. Here's where that touch is so important, uh, banking this three and running the cue ball to the right side rail and then bumping the four, using the six as a big blocker. The key to this shot is don't let up. I'm not saying you're going to hit it really hard, but you don't want the cue ball to go to the rail and bump the six. You know what I mean? You want to bump the four. That's the ticket. Yeah, just like that. The last few shots from Woodward have been a master class. Yeah, and that's a nasty object ball position. He's put the three in, not only the cue ball, Really in a great position for Woodward, but he cut off many signs of the three at different ways to kick at this ball. Look at, that's how much he cut it off. Yeah, that was hard. Josh has got such a good kicking prowess. Uh, you know, he, he gives himself a chance. You know, with no shot clock right there, I probably look around to see if I can get at that three some kind of way. Because what players don't realize is that little shot there, trying to bump it to the rail and bring it back up on the six, when nerves are high, that's as touchy as anything. Yeah, I would come over trying to get the natural angle to swing the cue ball off the four, a couple rails for the five in the lower left. Now, I don't know if he can do that even with ball in hand. So he's going to try and set up a little more straight, I think, on the four to draw. He made sure he wanted to get over there, and that's a smart shot. Makes things pretty natural. Woodward should get to the hill. Oh, 
ball seemed like it kicked a hair. Just a little top inside, a couple rails here. Doesn't have to go top inside. Could easily come one. The eight's so close. I kind of like the top inside Roman a little closer to the seven. It's not needed, but that's how the six lays kind of naturally, anyways. Tactically, he was outstanding in this rack. But of course, no amount of tactics can get the job done. You have to pot them in the end. That's what Woodward has done with a, a neat and tidy clearance here. And because of that, he has a modicum of daylight now. He leads 8-6. He's on the hill. One more required to be in the last 64 draw. As for Josh Roberts, no more room for manoeuvre, no more room for error. Three potential racks left, he has to win them all. And Josh wouldn't care what kind of shot he got, as long as he got to the table somehow to, to try and keep his tournament life going. Not many more matches left today. Now, Tafe and Tabor has increased the healthy German representation in single elimination. He's beaten Daniel Gutenberg in 9 5. Neil Svein, 7 4 up on Yipkin Linglio of Hong Kong. As we said, Sanyan Perlovanovic prevailing 9 5 against. Dang Than Kien. And on table two, a match we're going to pick up on the conclusion of this one. Albin Aushin leads Christina to catch 3 1. Uh oh. See you later. Oh, cue ball. Wow. The cue ball won.